Tokyo Energy Shipwrecks, I'm JP Fallais, and we're going to go diving. The weather is not very ideal. The weather's not ideal and it's actually pretty cold at the moment. We've got a southwesterly falls fall wind. Shouldn't stop us. We'll probably do one long one. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back below the waves, I'm JP Fallais and we're diving on the mill beds for more scallops. And the scallops up here are a lot chunkier. As you notice we were meant to go south but the waves were, probably would have made it pretty uncomfortable. Not so much for us but probably for Richard. So I made the right decision and we turned north instead. So up here on the seabed I go up and down the troughs, it's a technique that you know probably every other diver does. But I tend to find out where the waves are uh, because the waves on the bottom replicate the waves on the surface, believe it or not. It's just the way the tide passes over the sand. Once I find one, I just swim along this trough. I tend to find a few, and then what I'll do is I'll either go over to the next trough or I will go back on myself, believe it or not, so my dust is behind me. Depends how strong the tide is. I like to sit into the tide, to be honest. And as I mentioned before, the scallops up here are really heavy, really fat. Probably five, six years old. But there's plenty of them at the moment. Doesn't look like anyone's been up here in a while. large we have got loads of smalls here's a good example of how this is just troughed over large one just sitting here I can see many more this is what it formed trough and they're all sitting on the edge of it to see. Sometimes I can only see it because I see a little puff of sand. They definitely see me before I see them. Not quite sure what this lump is. There's loads of clams here as well. You can just see the back of them. There's one sticking out here. See the little puff that's just come out of it?
There's actually two here. There's this large one. And can you see the second one? Yeah, really hard to see. Again, I only noticed it because I've seen a puff of sand come out. You get the odd one that's actually just got out the sand and started swimming. Like this humongous monster. Oh, a little fish stuck on it. That's a baby lump sucker. Normally, when they're really small, they're orange or green, mostly green. This one's got like a pinky tinge to it. Try and get them on my finger. They got a little suction cup underneath them. Nope, he doesn't want to know. I'm going to carry on. This one, it's that old, it's getting barnacles on it. Oh, what fish was that? Oh, this is a dragonette. Look how well camouflaged it is. These have got sharp spines in them. I remember cut my finger on one of these once, straight through my glove. quite a nice heavy bag already there's not actually that many in there but because they're all so large fills it quite quickly it's typical as soon as I turn my camera off I run my hand up the side of a shark it's not a massive one and I think it might even be a spur dog I don't think it's a starry smooth hound quite a nice size shark these are a lot better to look at than the dogfish or the cat sharks just caught up with him. So elegant the way it swims. I don't think it is a spur dog because you'd see some spurs on the front of both of the dorsal fins. Doesn't look like this has. Maybe it is a starry. I'm not sure. But I'm not going to chase it. Once you've seen one, you keep thinking you're seeing some more. But no, I think it's just a bit of blue paper towel. Yep. We managed to come across a sandbank now and we're up against the reefs. There's loads of reefs, all these little black stones. Almost look like coal, probably because some of it probably is cold. We're up pretty much where the uh, bow fort was um, lost. 
and they chucked all the coal, well, 300 tonnes of coal straight over the side. So I'm taking my time and have a look under all these rocks because this is ideal habitat, especially when you see little dugouts like this, either for scallops or possibly octopus. I know Matt's seen an octopus up here, so I'll keep my eyes peeled for one. It's always the same, you see them when you haven't got the camera. But then again, it's probably the same for a lot of stuff. We do have a rule on the boat. If you didn't film it, it didn't happen. That's a weird thing at the moment, being able to see these large cock crabs. So this is a brown edible crab, or as we call them in Guernsey, shankers. Decent sized crab, solid, looked good. But I'm not in the market for crabs today. Just the scallops. And that one caught me out. So I thought that's definitely a scallop with some bit of live seaweed on the back. And there's another cat shark. Plenty of these around at the moment. Is this going to catch me out again? Is this one that's empty? Nope, we're all good. We've now left the back of the reef now, where uh, Boagenor, more on the northern side of it. There's plenty of crab pots that have just been lost out here. I'm not quite sure why they've been lost. Normally it's the propellers of boats go over the buffs, but these buffs look absolutely fine. Don't look damaged at all. Maybe it's just a bit of a tangle. Looks like it. It's a good pellet and a good buff there. Surprised they're not floating a bit more than they actually are. Must be weighted down quite heavy. These pots look quite old. I mean, they're still in really good condition, but they've been down here, I'm going to say, at least 18 months, looking at that seaweed growth. Let's follow these cables. Quite thick cables and look really clean as well. They haven't been buried in sand yet. Let's see what's on the end. I'm going to guess a few pots, but knowing the cable goes forward and back, probably only just one pot. Yep, one pile of pot. And it's got four or five decent cock crabs inside. I've got two options really. I can either tie my bag to it and go back up the line and then waste my air coming back down to uh, retrieve the pots. Or I could just open the door, let the crabs out and find the pots again another day. I know Rich is going to be annoyed because he'd probably really like them pots. I have made an assessment of my air and I've got 120 bar left. So I'm going to head up because I want to do another dive on this tank. Not a bad count for me. They're all big and they're all heavy. And as Richard sells by weight, I'm guessing 40 of these big ones are better than 60 of the small ones. I'm happy with that. One thing I love about this time of year is how low the sun is in the sky. No good because you want the sun really high to push its uh, rays down through the sea. But I'm happy with my lights on at this time of year. It's not the end of the world. loads and loads of scallops up here and they're all absolutely massive as well look how deep it is look how fat it is <laughs> so what did Matt have? 170 170, 45 for me
know it's a different colour, they're a lot more like, I like to call it Fagnolia. They're more of a nicotine colour up here. Fagnolia? Fagnolia, yeah. Oh, no. And yeah, it's a bit bumpy bumpy on the surface. Got a uh, gauge, John? Gauge, yeah. They all seem to be on the surface as well. It's a weird dive. See that crab pot? So I was going to tie into the crab pots and bring them up for Richard, but it wasn't right at the end of my dive, so. 146. Oh, it's not bad. It's not bad for weekend warriors. Matt's not a weekend warrior anymore. El Professional. <laughs> Mr. Professional. Uh, that's a very loose term. <laughs> Right, Whew. Right, I'm going to go back in, I think. Well, they survived, okay? Yeah, yeah. Alright, I'm going to go back in. 100 bar. 100 bar, that's enough. Give it five minutes, we'll be back in. I'll have property. Property? I'll have a squirt of orange juice, I think. Where can my orange juice is gone? I've done my one hour of surface interval. The reason we do an hour of surface interval is to allow the nitrogen to naturally go through our lungs and get expelled out through our body. Again, I've dropped right down next to the reef. I'm trying to, going to do the same run again, but towards the second half of the dive. The first half was okay, but uh, it's a little bit boring, so I've dropped in further up. Not so much on the wavy seabed now, but. Um, I did find that the second half of the dive was better than the first half. Looks like so far I've actually come down on a nice bit of seabed. At least the other two haven't been here. I can tell that by the amount of scallops that are still left. There's an angry female spider crab. They shouldn't even be here yet. It's not till May we start seeing them. Yes. Good gamble. Look at them beasts. Let's go. by my little eye something beginning with C can you see it as well lifted my camera off it changed the texture of its skin now it's got white spikes on it trying to scare me away even if I go all the way behind it you check out its eyes it can still see me perfectly 360 degrees of visibility these things have weird eyes they look like goats extremely brainy though
seabed's changed. It's now gone a little bit clay. Not quite sure if I want to get as many as I was before now. That is one. It's not too bad. Ah, it's too small. Put it back. Yeah, I don't like it when the seabed changes like that. Have to head back this way. Maybe go around the outside of this reef and back up the other side. Might get more luck. What is this? This looks like a huge bit of pottery. Massive. Let's take this out and give it a little clean. Not quite sure what it is. Is it old? It kind of looks old. Just let the dust settle. There's no glaze on the outside. Normally you can date stuff. If it's Roman, it won't have any glaze on it. It doesn't look the right shape to be Roman. Right up against this reef. Now I've got to make sure this isn't part of a shipwreck. So we'll take a look around. Looks like it's just, yeah, it's glazed on the inside. It's been thrown on a wheel, but it's glazed on the inside. It's, it's not mega old. I'm probably going to take it though and show Richard, see what he thinks. It's interesting. I'm going to send it up. I'll take the coordinates when I get back on the boat, just in case it is something old. If it's over 300 years old, you need to take it to the museum. I don't think it is. Probably 100 years old. Take it back up. If it was that large, it wouldn't fit in my catch bag, so I'll put it in my little goodies bag. It's a net bag I always keep in my pocket. Sometimes we've got to roll the cannibals into these to send them back to the surface. Say I'm pretty good on the air. It's not worth thinking about, but I'm pretty far out from shore. I'm sure if I come up on the boat and disappeared, I'm quite sure what I'd do. My protocol is just float in the water for a bit. Until Richie comes and picks us up. Or someone else that is. You can just see Matt right over there. Paul is right next to us. It's not really bad weather. It's not too bad to be honest. The waves are starting to break a little bit, but that's more to do with the tide and the wind. When Paul's ready, you'll see him starting to bob his buffs, just like that. When they do that, we go over to pick him up. use my dive camera because my other one will get soaking wet. Yeah. I think I done alright the first one. <laughs> 24 for me. I'm just going to look for Matt because we seem to have lost Matt. There he is. 
in line with the uh, the concrete chimney. We'll take a look at that in a minute when we're back in the arbour. I'm not quite sure what it is, I'm not sure if it's old enough, but I'm sure Richard would know what it is. Or how old it is. Certainly no amphora anyway. from Matt. When Matt comes up, the beans stay where they are and the sausage lifts up. That's how we know when Matt's coming up. He's on a fresh tank so he's doing a lot longer than me and Paul. So I'm expecting him to have a lot more scallops than us. It's not windy, eh? but there's a swell rolling. It's fucking horrible. Well as well. Very close, dumpy waves. We're not the only ones out here, there's other boats out here. There's other idiots out here. <laughs> there's other idiots, yeah. I mean, there's another dive boat down there. And here's Matt, let's grab his gear, get him on board, and get back to the cafe. Yee -hee -hee. Oh, that looks very happy. So it looks like he's got a few. Yeah, it's another big bagger. Can you help me? Yeah. <laughs> I can't grab it. Okay, mate. I've got it. Oh, jeez. Oh. It's the back beaker. Alright. Looks like Matt's going to be eating tonight. Is it home time? I think it's home time. Big blue sea. Right, I'm gonna put my camera away now because I've got a feeling we're gonna get very wet on the way back. So, official flag coming down and let's head in home. <laughs> Which one is that? That one, I found it. Ah, that was the blue one, Richard. I don't think that was yours. I'd leave him, Paul. <laughs> We're almost at Arbor. Yeah. I said the first quarter of a mile out the harbour is always the worst. Big boat coming out. January or sorry, you're getting towards the end of January, it's going to be February. Yeah. We haven't had to chip the ice off the mast yet, so that's the good news. <laughs> we'll crack it out the uh, with a wetsuit. <laughs> uh, yeah, bad news is the skipper forgot his wetsuit and left it in the car. Wise, uh, you know, pretty wise. See if Richard knows what it is. I'm sure you will. Oh, you're a bit of, uh... My shared of pottery, which is pretty much a whole pot by the looks of it. Oh, it's glazed. Not mega old. Not Roman. 
What's up, Richard? Oh, I've been here. Yeah, it's sort of pottery you'd use for skimming milk. It's pottery. It's pottery you'd use for putting in your garden, put a bit of ground in it. <laughs> yeah. Plant. It's got B and Q printed on the bottom. Yeah. Yeah. That's quite nice. Nice little pot. It's quite a nice little pot. It's not. It's <laughs> Your wife would like it in the garden. Yeah, she'd like that. It's not even complete, John. Oh, I didn't notice that. I'm going to ruin your video. Yeah. It's not even good. That's why I put music over it. <laughs> I can't see you. <laughs> you get your hands out of the way. <laughs> oh, that. Back in the seat. <laughs> Some bad things in the rest of the way. What's that? So I can put so many of my big concrete shoes. Yeah. Well, they had a very comfortable value. They, they, oh, they, got, they got to go back. They're in my garden, ready, ready to go back. So I hope you uh, enjoyed that. It's a bit rocky and bumpy and all over the shop. That's why I didn't do much filming on the surface. And we've done all right on the scallops. I think Matt had like a 170 and a 140. Uh, Paul had a 140 and a, a 43. And I think I had a 50 something and a 24. So yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, it's good because uh, Richard's got now some scallops in his store pot, so when he gets orders in he can get them uh, turned around and sold. I am absolutely drenched so I need to go. Uh, thanks for coming along on another dive with me and we'll catch you on the next tide.